Attention! Thank you for a lovely turnout and thank you for marching. Uh, we're all getting on a bit uh, and really, it is really good to see your commitment uh, to the military, to this occasion, etc. The poppy, I am not a badge of honor. I'm not a racist smear. I'm not a fashion statement to be worn but once a year. I'm not glorification of conflict or of war. I am not a paper ornament, a token. I am more. I am a loving memory of a father or son or permanent reminder of each and every one. I'm paper or enamel. I'm old and shining new. I'm a way of saying thank you to every one of you. I am a simple poppy. A reminder to you of that courage and faith, and we will stand where heroes stood. I thought it was quite a nice way of putting it. We had to honour the fallen from the very beginning of when Armistice Day started to the Rhodesian situation and everyone else who's fighting for the right cause. Honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Rhodesian Forces Memorial Committee, I welcome you all to this, the 2024 annual memorial service, as we remember and honour those who paid the supreme sacrifice, fighting in all the wars and campaigns in which Rhodesians have volunteered and fought so gallantly over the years. As one of our media colleagues commented this week, oh vey, what a week! Prince William arrives, Trump triumphs, and Dali and Porfu exits like Brexit. A special word of welcome again to those who will be joining us via YouTube. For the last four years, we've been able to have the service here at Dickie Fritz Shell Hole in Edenvale, video recorded and broadcast on YouTube, and we do so again this year, so reaching an international audience. Last year's edition recorded 78,000 hits. We said last year that next year will be better, and thankfully it is. We are once again able to meet in person this year without rain and for our veterans to parade as they have done today. We also thank Dickie Fritz Old Bull, Glenn Cuthbertson, and his top table for their cooperation and permission to continue to use their premises, and to the Mothwa for catering for us after the service. We record our thanks again to Mark Klein of Mark Klein Productions for filming and producing the YouTube version of the service, which means that an international audience can view the Rhodesian Forces Memorial Service this year. Those of you who have attended a number of previous services will be aware that while the essential shape of the service remains in the traditional format, which indeed it must, uh, as year succeeds year, there have been changes of participants and details. We said last year that time continues to take its toll, and two of our founder members, Colonel John Redfern, who since 1972, ran, run 1982, ran the original memorial services, and Horst Schobersberger, who for many years represented and laid the wreath for God Force, have been called to higher service and we honour their memory today. John Redfern recorded that his motivation was in memory of his late father, Captain Alan Redfern, killed in action on the 12th of November 1942 with the Long Range Desert Group and the many Rhodesians who made the supreme sacrifice. We're most grateful to Padre Butt von Skolkweg, who's again travelled up from the south coast to conduct our service today. Mary Redfern, John's widow, sends greetings from Swakopmund, where she's now resident, 
Air Marshal Hugh Slatter and Jane send greetings from the United States. Alan Strachan and Carol Doughty send their good wishes from the UK. Our past Tradesian Schools convener, Bruno Squera, sends his greetings from Plettenberg Bay, where he has continued to con contribute substantially to fundraising efforts. The advancing years take their toll in the ranks of the regimental associations as well, and as we see obituary notices circulated on websites and in newsletters, we are reminded of those we knew as young men and women, schoolmates and brothers in arms. As Colonel Armstrong has reminded us in previous parades, change there has been and will be as we go forward, as change is the only constant in our human experience. And we now carry the torch here of remembrance. New memorials have progressively been added to the array of memorials here, most recently the Salute Scouts Memorial, all of which you will see behind me in the background. Others are planned, so watch this space. During these years, the memorial display has been maintained, enhanced, and kept in good order. The numbers attending these services have increased year on year, and the financial position of the Rhodesian Forces Memorial strengthens such that we are able to donate funds to help to take care of Rhodesians in need. The introduction of the Rhodesian Schools wreath-laying section of the services has had a hugely positive effect on the success of the services overall over the last several years. We record our thanks to Gary Hodgson, who has seamlessly taken over as the Rhodesian Schools representative from Bruno, who continues to be a most effective fundraiser since he's emigrated to the congenial coastal regions of this country. Gary and Desi have in addition functioned as a most efficient team as secretary and organizers par excellence. We would also like to thank those who donors who have continued to support the memorial in these times of economic stress and challenge. Many wish to remain anonymous, but they know who they are, and we record a heartfelt vote of gratitude and appreciation to them for their contributions. A special word of appreciation and thanks for the generosity of spirit to the Mount Pleasant Old Boys for their substantial contribution again this year. We likewise thank the various regimental associations including those of the South African Defence Force or the former South African Defence Force who support this annual memorial service as the, the official Rhodesian memorial services service in South Africa. In addition to those who've donated generously to the memorial fund, many others have given a helping hand setting up and packing away this memorial display and others have helped out in a myriad of other ways. It's not possible to name everyone, but again, they know who they are, and we record our sincere thanks and appreciation to them all. Grateful thanks and acknowledgement again to the committee, the Moth and the Mothwa, for all the planning and preparation for this year's event. Thanks also to the many people and to you all today who have regularly attended the annual memorial services for your support and for making each one memorable. Please continue to attend future services now that we're able to hold them again, since as long as the generous donations to the Memorial Fund and the purchase of fundraising merchandise continues, the Rhodesian Forces Memorial will remain an annual event and may well continue to be the largest such gathering of Rhodesians anywhere in the world. Our Rhodesian Forces Memorial is a tribute to our fallen and does not celebrate any political event. We simply remember that through history, a history fraught with wars and political turmoil right up to 1980, when Zimbabwe gained its independence from Britain, Rhodesians answered their country's call and many paid the supreme sacrifice, earning Rhodesia a proud and distinguished military history. Although this memorial service is in remembrance of all those who gave their lives fighting for Rhodesia and is dedicated to the brave men and women who lost their lives in the Rhodesian Bush War, we too remember the many civilians, men, women and children of all races whose lives were brutally taken by a ruthless and cowardly enemy. We spare a thought for those who have been left physically or mentally wounded and we must not forget 
the terrible emptiness that families and close friends experience in the loss of loved ones. Nor should we forget those who have suffered and are still suffering dispossession, persecution, imprisonment, death and exile in the grim years subsequent to 1980. Thank you to you all for putting aside some of your time to attend or to watch this service and remember our fallen. By remembering their service and their sacrifice, we recognize the worth of the freedoms that these men and women fought to preserve at a time in history when those very freedoms are again being threatened by socialist, totalitarian and Islamic extremist regimes around the world. As in the case of Ukraine and Israel, Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon. The world is forgetting again. To quote a line from a poem which appears on your program. But why, mummy, are you crying so? Your tears are giving you pain. My tears are my fears for you, my child. For the world is forgetting again. They gave their tomorrows for our today. It is up to us to continue to work to ensure that their dreams of peace and freedom are all realized. We will remember them. To hear the call to remembrance oneself and to help others to hear it is a worthy cause to which to devote your resources. To be commissioned to devote them to this cause is a sacred trust, not to be undertaken lightly, not to be refused irresponsibly, but to be fulfilled thankfully. We do so today as we remember them. We'll now ask John Connolly to come forward and light the light of remembrance, please, after which Padre Butvans Kolkvek will open the service in prayer. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning to everybody today. <clears throat> Thank you so much for coming to join with us today and welcome to our service. Um, let's bow our heads together in prayer. Let us pray. We ask, Lord, that you would soothe our pain and that you would hear our prayers. May all learn to live together as one family, to share that none will be hungry or homeless, to care so that none will be oppressed or afflicted by violence. To love and to respect one another, despite our differences, so that freedom might be more than a word, and so life might be more than a struggle to survive. It is this that we ask in the name of the Prince of Peace, who taught us to say as one people together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand, if we can, and sing together the Rhodesian National Anthem, Rise of Voices of Rhodesia. Rise of voices of Rhodesia, God's
may I now invite Colonel Terry Lever to come and join us for the scripture reading for the day. Good morning and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The reading today is from the book of Ecclesiastes and is paragraphs 1 to 12. One. Life is useless. These are the words of the philosopher David's son, who was king in Jerusalem. It is useless, useless said the philosopher. Life is useless, all useless. You spend your life working, laboring, and what do you have to show for it? Generations come and generations go, but the world stays just the same. The sun still rises and it still goes down, going wearily back to where it must start all over again. The wind blows south, the wind blows north, round and round and back again. Every river flows into the sea, but the sea is not yet full. The water returns to where the rivers began and starts all over again. Everything leads to weariness, a weariness too great for words. Our eyes can never see enough. To be satisfied, our ears can never hear enough. What has happened before will happen again. What has been done before will be done again. There is nothing new in the whole world. Look, they say, here is something new. But no, it has all happened before, long before we were born. No one remembers what has happened in the past and no one in days to come will remember what happens between now and then. Here endeth the reading. Thank you so very much, Terry. Indeed, says Ecclesiastes, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. There is a time to love, and there is a time to hate. There is a time to be born, and a time to die. A time for war, and a time for peace. There is a time to remember. A time to remember. Why remember? Because we must remember. If we do not, the sacrifice of those 1,716 in World Wars 1 and 2, 1,361 in our bush war, be meaningless. They died for us. Together we died when we fought in the bush war. They died for their families and they died for their country. They died for a collection of traditions that they cherished and for a future that they believed in. They died for Rhodesia. And the meaning of their sacrifice rests with our collective national consciousness. And our future is their monument. These wars touched the lives of Rhodesians of all ages and of all races and of all social classes, touched the, the lives of fathers, of sons, of daughters, of sweethearts, killed in action they were. Many others were wounded, and thousands who returned were forced to live a life for the rest of their lives with physical and mental scars and the pains of war. The people who stayed home also served. They served in the factories and they served in voluntary service organizations wherever they were needed. And yet sadly, for many today as the years go on, we forget. War is now a phenomenon 
seen through the lens of perhaps a television camera or through a journalist's account of the fighting. Perhaps most of their closest physical and emotional experience may be the discovery of a wartime piece of memorabilia in a family attic. But even items such as these, the photographs, the uniforms, medals, diaries, all seem to be vague and unconnected with the life of the owner. For those born during peacetime, all wars seem far removed from our daily lives. We often take for granted our values and our institutions and our freedom to participate in cultural and political events, our right to live under a, gov a government of our own choice. The men and the women who went off to war went in the belief that the values and the beliefs they enjoyed and enjoyed by all Rhodesians, that these were being threatened. They truly believed that. They believed that without freedom there can be no ensuring peace and without peace there can be no enduring freedom. By remembering their service and their sacrifice, we come and we recognize the tradition of freedom that these men and women fought to preserve. They believed that their nations in the present, their, their, their actions in the present would make a significant difference in the future. But it is up to us to ensure that their dreams of peace are realized. And so it is that on Remembrance Day we acknowledge the courage and the sacrifice of those who served their country and acknowledge our responsibility to work for the peace that they fought so hard to achieve. It's just the fact that during times of war, individual acts of heroism occur frequently, but they are not all recorded. They are not given the official recognition for what they did. By remembering all who have served, we recognize they willingly endured hardships and fears taken upon themselves so that we could live in peace. When war came, Rhodesians were quick to volunteer to serve their country. They came from small farms, they came from towns, they came from large cities, they came across the whole country. Men and women signed up, motivated by reasons like patriotism, ideological belief, family tradition, the seeking of adventure, or even in many cases just to escape unemployment. They joined the war effort prepared to defend, to care for the wounded and to provide economic and moral support. War has always meant death. It's always meant destruction. It's always meant the absence from loved ones. But those who experienced the blood and the carnage of battle believed in their efforts that they made the world a better place. And traditionally, the poppies we wear remind of the brave, brave folk who died fighting for peace. And today we wear them as reminders of the horrors of conflict and the preciousness of the peace they fought to achieve. It's normally two minutes, two minutes of silence. Two minutes of silence that also provide for another significant way of remember, remembering wartime while thinking of peace. Father, hold us together now as one people as we focus on building for the future for those generations yet to come who will also be able to live in the peace that was so Ah, oh, costs so much to win. But may we never stop that fight, Lord. And keep us in your care to struggle on bravely for your holy name's sake. Amen. Thank you, Padre Butt. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the second hymn, which is Amazing Grace. Again, it will be a choral rendition and you can sing along with it.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. We're going to ask Steve Prophet now to come forward and turn the pages. From the British South Africa Police, Patrol Officer Alistair Scott, Uniform Branch, killed on active service 9th of March 1977. Patrol Officer Peter MacDonald, Support Unit, killed on active service 15th of May 1979. From the Rhodesian Army, Trooper Russell Poole, Support Commander RLI, killed in action 19th of April 1979. Trooper Colum Graham Nisham, 1 Commander RLI, killed in action 6th of September 1979. From the Rhodesian Air Force, Sergeant Kevin Peter Nelson, 7 Squadron, Killed in action, 28th of July, 1978. Sergeant Alexander Fleming, 7 Squadron. Killed in action, 12th of January, 1978. From Internal Affairs and Guard Force, DA Boko Nkomo, DA Regular, murdered 9th of October, 1977. Guard Corporal Yanni McKenzie, PV protection, killed on active service, 5th of November, 1979. From the Rhodesia population, nurse Mrs. F. Detoy, go to village clinic, and farmers Miss Jenny Douglas from Malseta. Thank you, Steve. Please, will you now be upstanding for the last post and reveille? And gentlemen with headdress, remember to salute during the last post. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to the laying of the forces wreaths and I'll read out the order of the wreath layers as they come forward. Rhodesian population, John Parsons. British South Africa Police, Neil Archer. Rhodesian Army, Colonel Terry Lever. Rhodesian Air Force, Clive Chard. Internal Affairs and Guard Force, Squadron Leader John Connolly. And now we move on to the laying of the Association wreaths this year. First of all, the RLI, 
laid by Neil Swart, then one commando, laid by Dave Russell, two commando, laid by Colin Byrne, three commando, laid by Gary Huxham, support commando, laid by Buck Theron, and the revision SAS, laid by Tug Morkel, the Lou Scouts, laid by Cecil van den Berg, the Rhodesian African Rifles, laid by Tiny Clemmer, the Rhodesian Armoured Car Regiment, laid by Graham Johnson, the Rhodesian Corps of Engineers, laid by Johan Erasmus, National Parks, laid by Bongwe Russell, the South African Armed Forces, laid by Gordon Beach. Dickie Fritz Moth by Old Bill Glenn Cuthbertson. And the South African Legion, laid by Andre Lechance. For the Viscounts, Anyati and Hanyani, Trish Browno. Once again, it's an honor to be a part of the service as we focus on the memories of our friends and of our schoolmates. Thank you to Colonel Pat Armstrong, receiving officer today, and to Colonel the Reverend Bud van Skalkveik for the critical roles you play in making the service not only possible, but a very special one as well. I must also acknowledge and thank all those organizers and wreath layers from the many different Rhodesian school organizations who so freely give of their time and their finances to organize the school wreaths which we'll be laying here today. Thank you all for your efforts, because it is those efforts that make this Remembrance Day incredibly important, especially to the families and to the friends of those guys whose names appear on these lists. We're not gathered here today just to commemorate the brave souls who died in the chaos and brutality of our bush war. We are also here to acknowledge the bonds of brotherhood, most often formed in our schools, that carried them into battle, despite the sometimes tragic consequences. A day like today gives us a chance to reflect on the true cost of war, the cost of lives lost far too young. Many of those we remember today were barely out of school just beginning to find their way in the world. Many were national service conscripts, thrust into the turbulence of a nation in conflict, far from the innocence and laughter of their school days. These young men were our schoolmates, our friends and our brothers. Their faces were familiar, their dreams not so different to ours. The war transformed all of us, forcing on us a maturity way beyond our years but most sadly, for those we remember today, it took away futures that never had the chance to blossom and unfold. In my experience, we did not go to war just for political ideals. We did not fight for the grand visions of politicians or the rhetoric of leaders. We fought for the person standing beside us. The one we knew as a schoolmate, a friend and a brother. In that brutal, unforgiving world of conflict, the loyalty and love of our fellow soldiers were often the only certainties we could count on and hold on to. It is this spirit of camaraderie that we celebrate today. The camaraderie that does not come from ideology, but that comes from shared hardship. Camaraderie that comes from times of much fun and laughter when away from the action, particularly on R&R &R and at places like Oasis and prospectors and cockdoor. And camaraderie that comes from hours of hurry up and wait and typical armed forces fashion the world over. And through it all was the understanding that your survival depended on the man next to you. It is this bond that forged friendships that no conflict, no distance, and no passing of time could ever break. I often marvel at how strong all of our ties are to Rhodesia and other Rhodesians, combatants or not, over 40 years after the country officially ceased to exist. When faced with the horrors of war, we all, men and women, drew strength from each other 
and from the shared promise that we would protect one another come what may. To those who were lost, our debt is immeasurable. Their sacrifice stands as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the willingness of the human spirit to give it all up for a friend. These were not men who had a chance to live life in full, complete lives. They were young, full of potential, yet were asked to endure what no one should have to at that age. Their courage, forged in the most harrowing of circumstances, remains a testament to the unbreakable bonds between ex-classmates and soldiers. And so today we remember them, not just as soldiers, but as the schoolmates, friends and brothers we knew so well. We honour the memory of their youth and the dreams left unfulfilled, their bravery and their loyalty to each other and to us who were left behind. We stand united, not in a glorification of war, but in recognition of the price paid by those who fought for the most human of reasons, to protect the ones they loved and the friends who became family on those front lines. In remembering them, we honour not just their sacrifice, but also the values that define them. Loyalty, love, and an unyielding bond of friendship. We must carry these values forward, ensuring that their memories live on, cherished and respected by all who are here today. It's the very least we can do for all these men and for our school heroes. We'll now delay the reads, uh, and I'll call the schools up in alphabetic order. But while I'm doing that, I encourage you to, on the back of the order of service, is a poem written by uh, Alf Hutchinson, uh, which I think is pretty relevant as we lay the school reads. I encourage you to read it at some stage. All right, moving on to the schools now. Alan Wilson High School, represented by Craig Hart. Chaplin High School, represented by Ian Jones and Mike Long. Churchill Boys High School, represented by Kevin Loder. Cranbourne Boys High School, represented by Bart Postuma. Ellis Robbins Boys High School, represented by John Stanton. Falcon College, represented by Stu Ferguson. Fort Victoria High School, represented by Mona and Mike Armstrong. Gifford Tech Boys High School, represented by Rob Sweeting. Guinea Fowl Boys High School, represented by Colin Matthews. Hamilton Boys High School, represented by Peter Allen. Jamison High School, represented by Di Connolly. Lord Malvern High School, represented by Ian Noble. Marandellas High School, represented by Willie Jacob. Milton School, represented by John Herdman. Mount Pleasant High School, represented by Colin Kuma. North Lee High School, represented by Clive Reed. Oriole Boys High School, represented by Paul Harley. Plumtree Boys High School, represented by Pat Armstrong. Prince Edward Boys High School, represented by Clive Dredge. Quekwe High School, represented by Tony Atkinson. 
Salisbury Girls High School, represented by Cheryl Monroe Saville. Sonoya High School, represented by Trish Chisnell. St. George's College, represented by Grant Spencer. Thornhill High School, represented by Skip Bischoff. Amtali Boys High School, represented by Dave Charles. Amtali Girls High School, represented by Martin Lunderstedt. Thank you, Gary. Uh, there's opportunity now for private wreaths and crosses. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, in the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, in the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, in the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, in the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, in the beginning of the year and when it ends. When we are weary and in need of strength, when we are lost and sick in heart, when we have joys and we yearn to share, for those who have no known resting place, so long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us. in memory of the fallen who gave their all and will remain with us forever. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them and nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Go with God. Amen. Thanks, but And there's just a special announcement. We have a lady in our congregation here who's just turned 103 years old. L Lillian Brown. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. To you, happy birthday, dear Lillian. Happy birthday to you. Hey, hey. hip hip, hey. and another one for 103. Hip hip. Hey. The light of remembrance has already been distinguished by the. It's put out the light of remembrance so John doesn't need to do it. But the toast will be served at the back in the wreath tent. Thank you all very much indeed for being here.